Hello everyone, welcome back to the video specials. First of all, before we go ahead with what you want to learn today, I would especially like to thank everyone who has subscribed to this channel. If you have not, please go ahead and hit that red button right there. Kindly, it will do both of us a favor. Now today we are going to be learning projecting data. And I would simply like to say the earth is not flat. So, I'm so sorry if you are a Flat Earth Society member, but you have to forgive me if I say the Earth is not flat. So, what shape is the Earth? Now, in my opinion, the Earth is an oblate spheroid, and this is what I remember from my geography class 101. So, some may say it's an irregular ellipsoid, some may say it's a sphere, but... What I know is the shape is oblate spheroid and this tends to make the earth appear flat on its poles and kind of bulging on its on the equator region uh, due to the forces of centripetal and centrifugal forces acting on it. Now you find that the radius from the center of the earth to the equator towards the equator section might be longer than towards the poles. Uh, this is not going to be a physics or a, um, let's say a geography class, so I won't go into much detail. Now, we know that uh, trying to uh, convert, let's say, a spherical object, say an orange, from its spherical nature to a flat surface will be somewhat impossible without having distortions. So imagine um, taking an orange and uh, splitting it in order to appear as flat and spread on a, a rectangular piece of paper. You will obviously appear with some gaps, meaning um, you will have lost some information. So some of the uh, people out there have tried to come up with ways of trans transforming the spherical world into a flat Cartesian coordinate system. So some have tried to preserve the area so that all of the objects have relative size. Some have tried to preserve the angles that is to be conformal, like Makata projection. If you have heard of it, then that's nice. And some have tried to mix with a little distortion on several parameters. So depending on what you want to do with your map, you will choose a certain projection. Now, remember us loading spatial data using a PG shape loader, and I'll link the video on the description box. But we had mentioned uh, projections, and we had mentioned SREAD 26918 for our matter. Now, we'll be looking at such and how to convert from one projection to another that is transforming the data. Let's dive in. Now, as I had mentioned earlier, when you create a spatial database, you have um, various default uh, tables, extensions, or other uh, items that are added to your database. For example, you'll have the extension PostGIS. You'll also have a table called spatial refsys, and this one holds all of the projections that exist. And then you'll also have um, a views, and you'll have two views. You'll have geography columns and geometry columns. If you want to check uh, the projection of our, for example, our table or the data within our table, we can use the stsread function. So select stsread, and we'll check the geometry field from... We can check NYC streets table and then let's limit it to only the first output. So if we run that, we get that uh, a value which is 26918. Now, as I had mentioned uh, in a previous video about SREAD, SREAD is the special reference identifier and it holds the projections contents. So let's say in a real world situation, you have a number of contacts in your phone, but you are not able to remember all of these contacts. So which is the best way to remember them? 
The best way is to save them according to the owner. So this works in the same way. 26918 stores all of the projection information about a certain uh, spatial reference. So we can have two ways of uh, viewing this or storing this projection. We can have the uh, S-read text, which is this one, or we can have the projection text. So, for example, you can check what 2618 is or what it holds. So for that, I'll select. Now we use something called proj for text, and this is a column that exists within the spatial ref sys table. So there are two columns. There is the sr text and the proj for text. So we are going to check the proj for text. So from spatial ref sys where now we are restricting our s read to 26 918 so if we run that we should get this kind of information so the projection is either um uh, stored as uh, the proj for text or text so this kind of information is stored within the digit 26918 SR text is used by external programs such as QGIS while Proj for text is used internally. Let's try and compare some two points uh, with different projections. So for this case, I'll just do a select statement and ST equals. If you haven't uh, known what XT equals does, I have a video on that and I'll link it in the description box. So we'll be checking uh, the same point, but with different projections. So stgeom from text, and we are creating a point. Point. If you haven't known how to create such kind of uh, features, please go ahead and watch the video I link. And then now we'll have it as 4326. For the first one and then you can have another one as from text point zero zero again this is the same point but you are giving it a different projection So if we run this, we get the, an error which says uh, operation on mixed S-read geometries. Now if you are trying to uh, do some comparison tests, you notice that you cannot do it with a, a, a data that has different kind of projections. So it is very advisable that you ensure all of your tables maintain the same projection and only perform transformations when doing external operations. This is because uh, if your tables have differing projections and you try to perform any transformations, then probably uh, spatial indexing will not be used. Now, uh, we notice that a coordinate and S-read define the location of a point on the globe, right? So without an S-read, a coordinate is just like an abstract notion. So for you to be able to define the exact location of the point, you have to have both the coordinate and the S-read. So let us try in our case and convert uh, from 23, 26, 9, 18 to 43, 26. In our previous query, we had tried to check the project for text where the s read is 26918 and when we ran that we saw that uh, the projection was utm utm is universal traverse marketer so this kind of projection uh, takes a cylinder and lays it flat on the ground and then the earth is inserted in the center 
So the earth is projected onto the cylinder such that it is divided into 60 zones. So each zone represents 6 degrees. That is 360 degrees divided by 6. You get 60 zones. Now, instead of using the latitude, longitude kind of uh, coordinates, these zones have a central uh, meridian of 500,000 uh, meters. Now, when the northern hemisphere, when you are the northern hemisphere, the northern value of zero meters. In the southern hemisphere, the equator starts as 10 million meters. This is because all of the values south of the equator will be positive. And this is usually called false nothing. So uh, we are trying to avoid any negative values. In our case, uh, we have zone 18 and it was zone 18 north. If we check SR text, we see that we have it at zone 18 north. And this is uh, starting from zero at the northern hemisphere. But if it was 18 south, it will mean that it is a false nothing, whereby it is starting from 10 million meters from the equator. So WJ is 84, which is the latitude longitude kind of uh, system, uh, will be represented by 4326. We'll select ST as text. And you're going to be checking the geometry from, uh, let's see, the subway stations. So from NYC subway stations, where the name is Broad Station. So if we run that, I think it's supposed to be Broad Station. Now we get a point in this kind of format where we have the NAD uh, written north and this is in UTM format. So let's try and convert this to WGS84 format. To do that, within the ST as, as text, we'll add the ST transform function. And what this does is transform it from one projection to another, transform. And then we enclose it into brackets. So we specify the geometry and the new uh, projection that we want to transform the point to. So we are transforming it to 4326. Now keep your eye on the final output. So if we run this, you should see that we have the uh, coordinates in latitude, longitude, or rather longitude, latitude format. Is that easy to transform your data from one projection to another? One more thing, if you have many tables within your database and you want to check all of their projections at the same time, you can use this kind of command whereby to select now we are going to be retrieving from the geometry columns in the views. So you select the F. We'll be selecting this column called F table name, which will be the name of the table. Uh, we can rewrite it as name. And then also the S read. Now from the table called geometry columns which is a view. So if you run that, you should get the list of all of the tables and their S read or their projection. Now, you notice that the geometry's column or rather table has a zero S read. Now to set another uh, correct S read, you can use the select then let's just st as text. 
Now within that, you are going to set our acid. To do that, use st set acid. And then within that, you give it the geom column, which is within the geometries table. And you give it the uh, projection, which is going to be 26, 9, 18. And then from geometries table. If you run that, you should get that. Also, additionally, we can transform this. So we within the S as text can transform that. So ST transform. And the whole of this st s will be within here. So then you specify the new uh, transformation, which in our case will be 43.26. And then run that. Okay, so this should be here within this comma. And run that. Okay, so you notice it has changed from the values that we had earlier to the newly transformed values. So projections are very easy. If you want me to make a more detailed tutorial on projections and how to go about them and why you will use one projection over the other, subscribe and let me know in the comment section. And kindly let me know which UTM zone you come from. <laughs> I'll be happy to know. That's it. Thank you, guys. And guys, if these tutorials are helpful to you in any way, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to give this video a like. Bye.